Hey YouTube, Merry Christmas to all. I'd like to talk today a bit about the God of the Gaps theory. Now, you may have heard this primarily as an argument used by theists against atheists. And it doesn't make a lot of sense as a rational argument. It basically goes like this. The theist would ask the atheist, okay, so you think evolution is how um, man came to be, but how did life get there in the first place? And, oh, wow, the atheist is stunned. He doesn't have an answer. Oh, so you agree the answer must be God. Well, that doesn't actually work as a logical argument. It should be apparent to any atheist out there, or, well, most theists, to be perfectly honest, that an atheist can simply take his position of ignorance. I don't know how the world came to exist. I'm not sure how life began. I'm not sure where the first cells originated. We have some good theories about that, uh, but obviously they're not watertight. And, well, I simply do not know. And that's a position I'm willing to take. For a bit more information about scientific ignorance, you can take a look at my video about the nature of science, which talks more about how we can justify being able to not know anything. Also, if you look back on the history of this theory, you'll find that a lot of gaps have actually been filled in by science, or some sort of human investigation. I mean, let's look back. Thunder and lightning, that used to be attributed to Thor by the Norsemen, and Zeus by the Greeks. The ancient Egyptians um, worshipped the sun. They believed that was their god, because they had no idea what it was. They literally saw their god rise and fall every day of their lives. Now, I don't know about you, but I know I'd prefer to believe in a god I can't please see. Please understand, I'm not saying that science can fill in the gaps to all these answers. There may, in fact, be some, uh, some questions that science will simply not be able to answer. If you want to use God as the name for your answer to these questions, that's one thing. If you want to use God as your answer to these questions, and then attribute him these other properties, such as omnipotence, omnibenevolence, omniscience, being an intelligent being, caring about us, judging us when we die, then you haven't really got a valid argument there. Just before I go on, I'd like to say I have no problem uh, a theist using this argument as a basis for his own belief, as long as he accepts that this is a leap of faith and not really a rational argument for the existence of a god. I will fully admit this is not a comfortable position to take. I've met many people who wished they could believe in god simply because it would give them some answers. It would give them some solid and definite answers to these questions in life. But you don't really need them to get on with your life, I find. How often does the question of how life came to be really affect your personal life here on Earth right now? Does it mean you'll work harder? Does it mean you'll visit your grandmother more often? Does it mean you'll eat another muffin at lunch? No, not really, to be perfectly honest. How does knowing where the universe came from really affect your everyday life? Knowing that divine judgment awaits you when you die, that's one thing, and that is very likely to affect your life. But knowing that this same God happened to make the universe? It doesn't really. It may be something you ponder on, to be honest. It may be something you're interested in and would like to investigate, but it's not really going to affect your life. That's all I wanted to say. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.